Hi, good people. I'm sure you are very well. <laughs> this is our day. <laughs> this is my day. <laughs> this is the day. The once upon a time Monday. Once upon a time my day. And our today's once upon a time is about customer at breakfast shop. Customer at breakfast shop. Once upon a time, there was a breakfast shop near a stadium. Many people would go there for breakfast. Once, a customer who used to go there noticed that a person came in when it was crowded and taking advantage of the crowd after having dinner he left secretly without paying the next day as the person was eating that customer secretly told owner of that breakfast shop about him on hearing that the owner of the breakfast shop smiled and said let him go we will talk about it later as usual after having breakfast that man looked around and taking advantage of the crowd he slipped away silently without paying for the food he had ate. Without, I mean, without paying for the food he had eaten. After he left, the man asked the owner, You see, now, tell me why you let that man go. And I think he does this deliberately. So he comes, sleeps in, eats, and slithers away. How? <laughs> the owner replied, Sir, you are not alone. Many regular customers have noticed him and told me about him. This man sits in front of my shop. I've been seeing him. And when he sees that there is a crowd, his secretary comes in and eats. I always see him, but ignore, and never stopped him or even caught him, never tried to insult him at all. I know, <laughs> this man, seated out there, he always prays that there be a crowd in this hotel so that he can get an advantage of getting something to eat. <clears throat> now, the customer was quite confused and asked, Why so? The owner replied, Because I feel that the crowd in my shop is because of this man's prayer. He would sit in front of my shop and pray for the shop to get crowded. Because if this shop is crowded, then he can quickly come in and eat and sneak away. And of course, there is always a crowd when he comes in. You see, I do not wish to invite misfortunes by interfering between his prayers and God's acceptance of his prayer. <laughs> I will always give him food and will never insult him or ask him for anything. And the man said, I leave it to you. At least I have told you that someone is taking your food for free. <laughs> and the story ends there. <laughs> And the man continued to have his breakfast. 
I guess I guess we also need to take our breakfast before we start getting angry that <laughs> that somebody is eating for free. <laughs> but this helps us to understand something. You know, one of the things that we need to get is that you you never get poorer by giving. You will never get poorer by giving. And remember, we have various types of prayers. And God answers them in their in his designs. I'm happy when this man says, I don't want to interfere. Remember, the hotel is always crowded. And this man has been eating. It's not even said for how long. But the customer has never failed to have, I mean, the owner has never failed, even one day, to have many customers coming. Maybe not, not about the prayer. But the point is, he never got tired of giving. And this is the lesson that we can take home. Please never get tired of giving. Because as I have told you in the past, I have never met one person who became poor because he or she was generous. Allow me to share with you uh, very quickly some six reasons no, seven, seven. Some seven reasons that uh, are the benefit of you being a generous person. Number one, generosity makes you happier. Now this, I can give a personal testimony. Every time I share whatever kidogo I have, I always feel happy that uh, someone else is smiling, you know. And you, maybe you can also attest to that. The more the more you give, the more you share whatever you have, the more God gives you some inner contentment. Number two, generosity causes you to be less stressed. Uh huh. Because you don't keep on asking, where will the next come from? Because the person, the person who gives you is, is a God of more than enough. If you didn't know, now you know. So, you can't be stressed because you know that uh, he who gave me, the last thing that I shared, will give me even more. And in fact, he will do exactly that. Number three, generosity helps you to stay physically healthy. <laughs> Number four, generosity strengthens your interpersonal relationships like your marriage and your friendships. Number five, generosity can help you live longer. <laughs> By the way, there is a study to that effect. <laughs> you may want to look for it. Uh, and it is true. So if you want to live more than 100 years, <laughs> send me something. <laughs> Number six, generosity will draw you closer to Jesus. I love that. You see, as Jesus followers, the studies may not surprise us. After all, our call to generosity is all over the Bible. What a gift from God to create an act that would so beautifully benefit everyone, the giver and the receiver. How I love this. And finally, number seven, generosity is an act of worship. It helps us to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Oh, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> so, there's so much we can talk about generosity. If only we can open our hands to release that which we are holding. Did you know that the bread that was with the boy, five loaves and two fish, that bread could not be multiplied in the hands of the boy? The multiplication only happens in the hands of the father. Release whatever it is that you are holding. Bless some, someone with whatever you have. Be a blessing and you'll see the abundance of God in its true colors. Thank you. <laughs> I am happy. Now that I have shared with you that, please allow me to go for breakfast. <laughs> and I will not pay. 